Good morning, everybody. Tashi Dele. Sanjo <laughs> ตายาทาทายาทาทายาทาทายาทาทายาทาทายาทาทายาทาทายาทาทายาทาทายาทาทายาทาทายาทาทายาทาทายาทาทายาทาทายาทาทายาทาทายาทาทายาทาทายาท
are all kind mother sentient beings. This uh, begins with reflecting on the fact of our own parents being present. And then uh, we, we, we go backwards and thinking our parents of the previous life are also present, of the previous life to that, of the previous life to that, until we go right back to uh, all kind mother sentient beings since beginningless time uh, without exception that we feel they are all in some way present uh, surrounding us and that they are uh, although experiencing all the sufferings related to the six realms of existence uh, they are experiencing them as, as if a human would with a human intelligence and that therefore also they have that appreciation as we do of the wonderful enlightened qualities of the enlightened buddha who is uh, representing the merit field in front of us? Lama to be on good to do another Lama to be on good set of a day, and it you own cover timber arm of a two hour home with the Yigas of the set up, and a two hour home there was a part of my baton and the Casa Casa Data comes from the same Jetam Jella and Casa comes from the same Jetam Jella, we said that, and it's you want a my shune, Taka Shune, Taka Jaja, we said that. Uh Chuba de Pua Latena, Chuji Gawa said that Chuba to you let the water, they were tomba, they don't use my issue, kiss or some such. And then more Chuju Gawa said that Chuba Kusun to get your day, you bala number, and to Basha to be number chain, and then Rangi Dunganaga said that Lama to be on with the Latimne, and Timne, and then Taumba, Nisu member just like a Timne, and then Rangi said that we're to be on with the Nisu member Juna, Ishiba Musu Juna, what are the legends of some of the So we begin the visualization centering on the uh, the, the uh, figure of the Shakyamuni Buddha in the merit field in front. And, uh, we see that the Buddha is marked by three syllables, Om at the crown, A uh, at the throat, and the syllable Hung at the heart center. From the syllable Hung emanate countless rays of light, uh, going out into all the directions. In fact, in all the the, uh, the three realms of existence, and these lights uh, dissolve into the sentient beings of all the three realms of existence and begin the process of complete purification of all negativities that they have accumulated since beginning this time, including all the, uh, the uh, vows that have been uh, broken and uh, samayas that have been broken, etc., etc., and we feel that they are completely uh, purified. And this uh, purif purification, uh, this process of purification, takes the form of a virtue. And the virtue of that pur purification is then offered to all the Buddhas in the Ten Directions. It's this kind of like countless offerings to all the Buddhas of the Ten Directions. And the Buddhas, upon receiving all of these uh, virtuous offerings, uh, they immediately experience a sense of bliss, which combines with the voidness, and they abide in the wisdom of non-dual bliss and voidness. This, these uh, offerings indeed are just symbolic of uh, of the wisdom beings that uh, dissolve into the to, into the Buddha that we are visualizing, and that we really feel that the wisdom beings have become one uh, with the Buddha, and that is really actually there as a, in the process of the extra consecration of the figure we are visualizing. What 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 did I say? Ongilana <laughs> 
And again, uh, light rays emanate from the hung at the heart center of the, the Guru Manindra that we are visualizing. This time, drawing forward all of the empowering deities from their natural abodes. Uh, these uh, empowering deities confer the nectar of empowerment, some of which overflows at the crown of the, the Buddha, producing simultaneously the figure of Akshobhya. And then, from our point of view, we again bring our focus on the one hand to all the sentient beings all around us, and uh, in, in reflecting on that their suffering and pain that we cannot bear uh, brings forth the, uh, the mind of compassion within us. And similarly, with one part of our mind focused on the merit fields containing the, the Buddha, uh, we are again filled with this triple faith uh, in the qualities of the Buddha, the faith, pure faith, the faith of conviction and the manifest faith. May all sentient beings uh, uh, be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May this be the case. I will see to it that it is the case. Uh, oh, Guru Deity, please bless me to make this so. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May this be the case. I will see to it that it is. Oh, Guru Deity, please bless me to make it so. How wonderful it would be if all sentient beings had the happiness that knows no suffering and the excellent bliss of liberation. May this be the case. I will see to it. O oh, Guru Deity, please bless me to make it so. And in order to bring this about, these three immeasurable thoughts, uh, of course, we have to found that we have to kind of base them and, and make a foundation for them in equanimity. And so, therefore, how wonderful it would be if all sentient beings could abide in equanimity free from attachment and anger that holds some close and others distant. May this be the case. I will see to it that it is the case of Guru Deity. Please bless me to make it so. <laughs> And so, you know, we make this kind of very powerful vow uh, for ourselves to, uh, in order to fulfill the purpose of all sentient beings, or until we attain the state of enlightenment, I will not stop working for the benefit of sentient beings and, and, and really establishing and generating all the qualities of a Buddha. And may this quickly, quickly come about. We make this strong supplication. Mm. And so as a result of reflecting on the mind of enlightenment this way or that a powerful aspiration to attain that mind of enlightenment, uh, it is um, uh, symbolized by the mandala, the moon mandala disc and the syllable A at our heart center. I'm sorry, first of all, it's, it's symbolized by the Sanskrit syllable A. And then this is transformed, this A itself is transformed into the, uh, the moon disc mandala. Mm. 
And so then this notion of uh, myself, I want to quickly, quickly attain the state of enlightenment. We begin the process of really ascertaining what is the, uh, the mode of existence of that I. And so begins the analysis to really find this I. Uh, is it within the, the body complex or the mind complex or indeed uh, from some other uh, source? But on uh, you know examining and analyzing, uh, we reach the point of uh, what's known as the mere negation of the object of negation. And we place our placement mind on that, just this sense of the mere negation of the object of negation. And this then is transformed into the syllable hung. And the hung then transforms itself into a white five-pronged vajra, which is standing on the moon disk mandala at our heart center. What did it What did it say? 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 What did it What did and so we make a, a very powerful vow at this stage that this uh, combination of the mind of enlightenment and the, the view of emptiness, the wisdom uh, of emptiness, that we will never forsake uh, these minds. And indeed, we will do everything possible uh, from this point uh, to uh, integrate these uh, motivations into every action that we take, regardless of what that situation is. Sanjeyo and so we, we make the vow, a very deep down heartfelt vow that uh, until I attain the state of enlightenment, I will never give up on the mind of enlightenment and the wisdom uh, of emptiness. Uh, and will, I will never forsake uh, these minds. And so from that too, we notice that in the merit field, uh, the Guru Buddha that we are visualizing has a similar combination of moon disk and uh, and upright five pronged vajra at his heart center. But that is also we see that the moon disk, I'm sorry, the vajra is surrounded uh, by the name mantra of Shakyamuni Buddha, Omuni Muni Mahamuni Soha. ことで、あれでね、だから、だいたいと思うにもね、まあ、もうだいたいと思うにもね、まあ、もうにはそうあせで、あれ、あ、ラマトゥベオンベトガリウェ、あれ、タワ、タワとちだ、ティタゴでト
Nati Devasani, Chitu Anni, Tumbe Tugan Yuba Tao to Jetsangabale, Randa Pato Mabachun, Randa Ranga to Simja Tanja Tao to Jetsangabal, Tumbe Sanga del Pat Timney. Pa Timjan, and a bear rang Ranga Simja Tanja and a Jamnij Janjas of my Java Kiva Ken of Kona, but I was sure to also some such what in the combustion and come that Tani Devasani and Yahoo Yuba put in the chat. So, yes, that um, the the visualization that we are making in in a in reference to Shakyamuni Buddha at the heart center. There we see that uh, moon disc mandala. With the upright five pronged Vajra, it's surrounded by the name mantra of Shakyamuni Buddha. Uh, this then uh, begins to, as we recite the name mantra, Thayata Omuni Muni Mahamuni Asoha, uh, we see that uh, this combination uh, is emanating from the heart center of the, the Guru Buddha and, and heading into uh, towards myself and all sentient beings and indeed dissolving into the crown of myself and all other sentient beings. And so this kind of countless combination of uh, of the moon disk, Vedra and name mantra. And that as we continue with our recitation of the mantra, uh, this then begins the process of really dissolving and and so really eradicating all of the obstacles to our generating uh, the mind of enlightenment and the wisdom of emptiness, and um, indeed also bestowing all of the conducive conditions to generate um, the mind of enlightenment and the wisdom of emptiness. And we make that prayer in our minds as we continue the recitation of how wonderful, I mean, whatever, you know, the mind of enlightenment that has not arisen, may it arise and grow. May whatever of the, the view of emptiness that has not arisen, uh, arise and grow. And then this uh, this light it starts to beam out from ourselves and all other sentient beings, again, affecting that purification on the one hand and the bestowing of blessing uh, on the other as we continue with the uh, recitation of the name mantra. Yeah, hotel. Never that what that reciting chair, what there is a town there, town there, and Pine to be to Gan Yuba Tower to the Tangabala, Casota, Casa, part of Mabata, to the Tanga, part of Mabata, to be to Gan Yuba, and to be Tanga, not in the letter, to be Tanga, part of Mabata, multiply it away, but take to twenty. And around the Sunday Tamjala, to Gan to go to the Tanga, but to be Tanga de la Martin, or Tatim, and it energy Casore. Rekasada, <laughs> And that, uh, you know, the we, we view the process here of the emanation of the moon disk, uh, Vajra and Mantra combination as uh, being emanating countlessly. It's like a really very fecund flowing from the heart center of the Guru Buddha and then dissolving into myself and all other sentient beings. This is a continuous multiplying uh, force uh, of um, blessing and uh, purification that is taking place as we uh, recite the um, the name mantra. And this also is that, uh, you know, the meaning of the name mantra of Shakyamuni Buddha, Tayata Muni Muni Maha Muni Soha, there's uh, three mentions of this word Muni. The first is in reference to the um, uh, uh, the um, initial capacity being and the 
the second is referring to the uh, intermediate capacity being. And the third, the Maha Muni, is referring to the Mahayana uh, vehicle and the uh, attitude of the bodhicitta attitude. And so it's saying that this is the process through which one proceeds on the path. And it's all laid out for us. One goes through the combination of the three capacities of beings, mastering all of the teachings related to those particular motivations. And in this way, uh, one is able to uh, attain the state of enlightenment. And so that when we are doing such a practice, we can envisage that even smaller inconveniences like a, a pain or illness and so on, anything that might be acting as an impediment to our practice, uh, that is also being purified in this practice, as well as the greater uh, elements, and that is the obstacles to our actually generating a realization of uh, a, a body or the mind of enlightenment and a, a realization of emptiness, that uh, it's all taken care of uh, in the process of this uh, um, practice. What <laughs> And so we will really, you know, set our motivation both uh, as vastly as we can, as clearly as we can, being the generation of the mind of enlightenment and the uh, the 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 realization of emptiness, uh, in order to attain enlightenment for the benefit of all the sentient beings, and that we know that the objective is the uh, fulfillment of the aims of all sentient beings by taking them to the state of enlightenment itself. We know that the causes that bring this about are the mind of enlightenment and the realization of emptiness. And so with this in mind, we are here to listen very with this motivation uh, to some verses from this great text known as the Bodhisattva's way of life. <laughs> ジャンプ直すに行けちゃうそんばね。いいにけちゃうそんばね。ウォーキングとかな。え、ウォーラシバ。いや。そうなんです。ウォーキングとかな。ウォーキングとかな。ウォーキングとかな。ウォーキングと
And indeed, the name mantra of Shakyamuni Buddha that we've just been talking about can also stand uh, for the uh, fulfillment and the realization of these three minds of renunciation, the mind of enlightenment, and the correct view of emptiness. And the importance of uh, being aware of this is that, you know, when we do recite the name mantra of Shakyamuni Buddha, that also these, the purpose for which we are reciting is kind of automatic in the mind. That yes, we are trying to master uh, the path of the uh, lower capacity being, the intermediate capacity being, and the Mahayana, the greater capacity being, and recognizing how this is all indispensable to the attainment of enlightenment itself. And so that uh, we should not be in any way discouraged that uh, the, the Buddha is the one who has attained that state of enlightenment. And there isn't really any reason why we ourselves uh, cannot also emulate the Buddha and attain enlightenment. Why? Because uh, just like the Buddha had uh, uh, the what is called the, 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 the Buddha... Um, lineage or seed uh, we also have that same buddha potential uh, within us and so we have that potential to attain enlightenment and so it is said that all sentient beings, regardless of, of what kind of uh, being they are, have all have this Buddha potential. Uh, but of course, uh, it uh, varies a great deal uh, in with regard to fulfilling that potential, of awakening uh, that potential. And so it's kind of like we say, it's very obvious that many uh, beings um, uh, that are not human, are uh, very much kind of shackled and uh, at a disadvantage in being able to awaken and to fulfill and that's uh, Buddha potential. And so it's uh, very much then, very much comes into focus that we as human beings, having been born as a human being, and in particular, having uh, been born with what's known as a, a precious human rebirth, having uh, certain great advantages uh, that we uh, have all of the conducive conditions to fulfill uh, our Buddha potential. And so, therefore, to recognize that we are in an especial, especially fortuitous situation right now, and uh, that we should really see it as a responsibility of ours then to take the essence, what's known as taking the essence of this life. Uh, and that means dedicating it to uh, the generation of the mind of enlightenment and a realization of emptiness. Mm -hmm. 
ตัวเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ย
<clears throat> and so this verse really deals with um the uh the it's it's really dealing with the difference between those who have the correct attitude who have developed the correct attitude um and that 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 psychological certainty um versus those who haven't and so it's really saying that you know on the one hand that uh, when one as it's be that beautiful image of the who are riding the powerful uh, horse of the mind of enlightenment uh, that any sense of discouragement despondency um is completely inconceivable uh, that uh, they are going from joy to joy, creating the causes for one, and therefore experiencing the uh, the, uh, the beautiful results from those virtuous causes. And so that is saying, really pointing out, for those who know, for those who are in the know, who really realize this, um, such a sense of uh, of um, discouragement and despondency, despondency is just inconceivable. And it's, of course, um, uh, on the other side of that coin is pointing to the fact of ourselves as uh, beginners. Um, we have um, uh, the difficulties of um, practicing the path, constantly meeting with uh, obstacles and, and, and so on. And, and, and we cry uh, about these. And, but of course, you know, these problems uh, don't arise without cause. And we really need to center on the fact that the causes that really are at the heart of um, these issues are our self-cherishing attitude and our inability uh, to see the importance and cherish others. And so uh, because this is the difference for those who know, who have got that sound uh, psychological certainty, uh, they have uh, pondered. Uh, the faults of the first, that is the faults of self-cherishing in great detail. And then also they've also pondered on, contemplated the great benefits of cherishing others. And they really made a choice. They have seen uh, kind of the reality. If we stick with, you know, keep pandering to our self-cherishing, of course we're going to, you know, meet with obstacles, uh, constantly invent obstacles, create more difficulties for ourselves. But when you are focused, 100% focused on the benefit of others, of really seeing why it is makes psychological sense to emphasize the benefit of others, and then you are constantly doing beneficial things. You are enthusiastic about what you're doing. You're creating the causes for happiness and you're experiencing happiness because you have don't create any causes for suffering. And so there are no problems uh, involved. And because of that, uh, the mind of the Bodhisattva with that great riding the great horse of the uh, Bodhicitta mind, the mind of enlightenment, will not have any experiences of despondency or discouragement is just inconceivable what 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 but can get to get and go kill 
tengo macchia vai tal do muleta né de lege samlo trodan la guida tv trodan ge samlo namsha ya vo singe ji ba ina ho ta ti kilu ba yogu mares yogu mares ho ta de yin ba yin sa ana samlo de lege samlo go trodan ge ti ana rang xia ba che ko do xia ba yin ba ina an ko nyam slan de kangai yogu yo mare ko 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 de de anche ta ga ni che ge len de ge trodan de zo ya vo xin ba che Cabri Cabri Mazo, Chile, let and watch in Yamlenche, Kalakai, Mangoyonte, Gitonte, Shogutua. At the Kanga Mangoyonte, Yonte, Koso, Yamle, the Cheval, the Nekanga de Mare. Casa Kanga Yonte, Rig Tita, Kanga Tita, Rig Tumbe, Lang, Yamachi, Tribu Yonte, Machimache. Oh, Tanga, Yamle, this to Kanga de Jones, some such, come to the Samuta. Mado, T Rig Tunda Matung, the Samuta Matanache, and then they get. And Jordan the machine on the tene, yeah, the legate you want to get to what I did get there, Namia Chesin Chesima Chen. Rua, Rua, Shen Chen de Latin, the one Pashima de Yoyaman, Ran Chen de Latin, Dunga Pashima de Yoyaman, to get the and Jordan the Namia de Puriti, Yawa Chesima in Anne, Anne, Cotter Cosa de Anne, take Namlechi to draw a kid, you good one. You good one. Tingela Sonsoa, Chigi, Gasa Jamni Janju Senda, Tony Tobe, Sherab, T. Sundet on the Yon de Uncone, and it took my own the Dinget, Chimaiba. Rua, Gawa Yungres, Janju Sengon, Tony Tobe Sherab, the Tunged Yungumares, Tunged Yungumares. And so, in many ways, you know, what's being presented here is uh, from the point of view of uh, the beginner who um, is meeting with issues and problems in practice. It's um, it's down to a misunderstanding. You know, they simply don't get it. And uh, it's a misunderstanding around the, the law of cause and effect. And uh, when we uh, are, you know, we can see as a beginner, when we meet with problems, even when we are practicing, uh, we tend to think that the, the problems are a result of my practicing. Uh, we don't actually make the connection that the suffering and that we experience and problems that we encounter are directly related to negative causes that we have accumulated in the past. And this is the result of those negative causes, that there, it's the uh, incorrect correlation between cause and effect that we are making. And so this can exacerbates the issue for ourselves and it creates uh, more impediments to practice. And so that's the first really kind of conviction that we need to generate, conviction in the law of cause and effect itself. And so that we realize that, you know, if we create uh, negativity, we're going to experience a suffering result. If we create virtue, we're going to experience a happy result. And, it, uh, you know, the... The most exclusive way of creating virtue is to focus all one's energy and attention on the generation of the mind of enlightenment and the wisdom realizing emptiness. As if we're able to do that, uh, we are not going to experience problems. And if we go back one step, you know, that when we are developing the mind of enlightenment, re wisdom realizing emptiness, we are having contemplated the faults of self-cherishing and the benefits of cherishing others also completely reversing the emphasis that we place on those two minds. In other words, we are dismissing uh, the self-cherishing uh, kind of complaint, and we are focusing all our attention on benefiting others. And that, uh, because of that, then we are also able to fulfill uh, what is required from the mind of enlightenment um, um, uh, motivation and uh, uh, developing the wisdom of emptiness. And so, therefore, that's why uh, it's only virtue that is being accumulated, and therefore, suffering is uh, cannot uh, be a result. What <laughs> And the Joba Dubala, Casada, Joba Dubala, Tani, on the Chawa was in the subject sumje. That Ambutilla Casorem, 
Uh, so the second main heading uh, within this chapter was uh, ways in which one can increase the power of our enthusiastic effort. And this has three subheadings related to it. Uh, the first of these is that, um, first of all, showing that the, the, the power of the conducive conditions and what part it plays in increasing our enthusiastic effort. Uh, secondly, is the application, how we apply uh, uh, mindfulness and alertness uh, in uh, what is to be practiced and what is to be avoided uh, and being able to do that with a certain degree of enthusiasm. And thirdly, is then um, how we uh, control uh our, our ourselves in, in the uh in, in our practice how we can you know maintain a sense of uh, discipline and control uh within our practice and so the verses begin with the the discussion of the first of these points that is uh that how conducive conditions um uh enhance the power and increase our um enthusiastic effort and this is going to be dealt with first by uh, a brief presentation of what are known as the four uh, four powers. And uh, secondly, uh, a more extensive explanation of those four. Tempetop,Kavetop,Anukasata,Toretops,Topsi,Tatopsi,Mosuel,Topsi,Mosuel,Kunet,Akasata,Topsi,Mosuel,Kunet,Anutopsi,Mosuel,Kunet,Anutop
And so, um, in indeed, these four are uh, act as the antidotes to uh, what is regarded as the, the main obstacle to enthusiastic effort, and namely uh, laziness. And this uh, laziness has um, three different aspects to it. Uh, there is the laziness of clinging to negativity or negative actions. Um, and this centers on really a an overriding uh, att attachment to the the stuff of this life uh, it's often referred to as you know attachment to food clothing and reputation and so all of what's involved in that is kind of like really taking all the energy and time uh, that you could be uh, engaged in dharma and really um because you're so wired into just the uh, benefits of this life the second of the uh, laziness is this is uh, really um, summarized by uh, procrastination. Uh, we're constantly uh, putting off uh, our real kind of uh, dedicate or real kind of commitment to the Dharma. Uh, we say, ah, you know, I'm too busy right now. I'll get onto this later. I know when I'm retired now, I'll have loads of time. And so then I'll really uh, get into it. And you're always putting it on the, the long finger. Uh, this is uh, really, you know, very detrimental, of course. And the third type of laziness is centered around the idea of uh, defeatism, of you going, oh, it's it uh, sounds very good, but uh, not for me. I couldn't do that. Uh, you know, I'm not able to do that. It's all too much. Uh, and basically, your mind is just creating uh, an excuse. Uh, not to commit and so all these are the three different aspects of that laziness Lelosome <laughs> And so, you know, the clear thing is that uh, if we were into creating the causes of um, of, of suffering, uh, then it would be, you know, if that was, the, you know, the right thing to do, then these lazinesses would be very helpful. Uh, but uh, when we're trying to establish virtue, uh, really any of these lazinesses or any hint of them is really not conducive at all. And so here it's been presented to us as a beginner. You know, what your aspiration is to attain, really practice enthusiastic effort in the in the pursuit of your Dharma uh, practice. These four of uh, the uh, aspiration, uh, steadfastness, joy and rest uh, are, are kind of saying these are indispensable for you as a, great tools for you as a beginner uh, to overcome laziness and to get yourself on the right path towards enthusiastic effort. That's 
ตัวบาดาเตเตเตจิงามเลนติกอตซอซาบาเตอันนี้กอจิมุตุนิเจตุเยเกอันนี้เตเบตอกจัวเมเบเตเบตอกเกตัวเจรวากันจิงิมะค
And then through reflecting on the benefits of that very practice, uh, we can experience joy. Uh, you know, something that we can contemplating on the fact that if we are just focusing on benefiting sentient beings, the virtue there is going to produce uh, benefits for us. And that is brings joy to the mind and that joy in turn uh, feeds our enthusiasm. And so this is a, you know, psychologically sound kind of practice. And of course, the power of um, uh it's kind of like the power of a casting out, uh, literally, but it's really the power of a skillful uh, break or a skillful rest, uh, the final of the powers. And this is that, and of course, as a, as a beginner, we, you know, we have a contaminated body, we have a contaminated mindset, and then we are very prone, of course, to the tiredness, prone to exhaustion. And it's then your your skillful kind of decision to say, okay, I now need to rest. I need to rest the uh, body and mind. But you are your motivation for resting is that you are quickly going to uh, recover and get back on that horse and really um, practice the Dharma um, as assiduously as you possibly can again. So it's not a kind of open-ended break that we're taking. It's not like a chance to flake out. It's kind of a going, a going, you're realistic and you're going, okay, I'm resting my body, I'm resting my mind. And then as soon as I am ready, uh, I will again re-engage uh, with my practice as, uh, with as much enthusiasm as I can. Um, and so this is the, uh, these are the, the four powers which are, you know, the what are known as the conducive conditions to um to generate um the enthusiastic effort, which is the subject of this chapter. And it's saying here that also the uh what generates what sorry benefits the generation of aspiration is to uh, contemplate the results, the suffering results of a non-virtue and that fear that arises is uh, spurring is going to spur us on. And then, uh, and and to you know, contemplate the very benefits of aspiration itself, because it acts as a, as an antidote, and the, the benefits of that uh, is something that will further in, enhance our aspiration. Um, and then uh, the uh, looking at the four powers together, uh, acting as the. Uh, the conducive conditions to not only uh, aid our enthusiastic effort, but also uh, to dispel the inconducive conditions uh, around uh, laziness and all the different aspects of laziness. And so we're including here, of course, that the power of aspiration, the power of uh, that, that self-confidence that comes with steadfastness uh, of joy, and of uh, being able to take a well-focused and a well-directed rest. And that so these are the four powers when they are assisted by uh, the minds of uh, um, uh, um, mindfulness and alertness, um, then uh, we are, that they will assist us in what to take up and what to leave aside in terms of uh, practice. And also then once we have accompanied that with that sort of, uh, control a control that we have of our mind and what we will kind of turn our mind towards and what we will turn our minds from uh, this is a power in itself and that uh, when we have these in play and then our enthusiastic uh, enthusiastic effort will go from a strength uh, to strength and increase uh, more and more what <laughs> Or 
So, uh, yes, the uh, contemplation of the how non-virtue is definitely going to give rise to suffering. And our, it's not so much a fear of that, but it's kind of the, coming to the realization that, OK, I want happiness. I don't want suffering. And therefore, I don't want to engage in non-virtue because that's going to bring about the suffering. And that uh, this is something that uh, generates the aspiration for us then to do the right thing, isn't it? It's the aspiration, the power of that aspiration. And then the second of these powers again, and the actual uh, Tibetan reads kind of pride. Um, but this is more self-confidence. And pride is generally regarded as a negative uh, aspect, a uh, characteristic. But in this context, what you are doing is overcoming uh, a lot of the um, the laziness of defeatism, of saying, oh, I can't, oh, not me, um, I really can't, I'm not good enough. Here it's saying, no, uh, hey, I have uh, Buddha potential, uh, I have a precious human rebirth with all those leisures and endowments that really assist me in my practice. And if I don't make the most of it now, when am I going to get such a precious human rebirth again? Um, and so you, you really, you know, talking yourself up, uh, and this is the power of that confidence or steadfastness. It's a, it's kind of like a, yeah, a self, a really powerful self confidence. Say I'm setting a high standard because I know I can live up to that high standard, and the, and then as a result of that, and really as a as a follow on from that, because you are performing at a high level, and then your joy is going to come and go. Oh yeah, uh, this is great. I've really done well today. This is something I, I wouldn't, I haven't experienced joy like this in the past, but uh, this is really wonderful. Something new. Uh, I'm able to actually do what I set out to do. And of course, uh, then uh, the um, judicious uh, rest that uh, we say, oh, I really do because of the contaminated body and mind here. I need to uh, rest well in order that I can really, you know, get up again and, and, Go for it um, in the future. And so, uh, and then it's talking about what assists all of this is this beautiful, these minds of uh, mindfulness and alertness, uh, where you have the focus on what you need to do, and then you have the alertness that is constantly checking on the status of that focus. Are you, you know, succumbing to a distraction or are you really nicely focused on that? And that is, is not only that simple focus, but it's also being able to. You know, you you have then from that this sense of control of body and mind. You're able to make very good choices about what it is you need to practice and what it is you need to leave aside. And all of this then 
serves your uh, enthusiastic effort. And so the, the, the job of mindfulness and alertness is that uh, mindfulness is focused on the side of virtue and alertness is constantly checking just as in like a, an introspection where it's a mental uh, um, uh, mental factor uh, that is, is is checking to see whether that mindfulness is still focused on virtue, the side of virtue. And, and so then we'll deal uh, with the, the, the second of uh, the subheadings that we have just uh, uh, met. And uh, remember, the first was a, a brief exposition of the four powers. Here we're looking at the, the more extensive explanation of these four. Uh, so they'll be taken each in turn. And so we have the, the four, uh, again, the power of uh, aspiration, the power of, of steadfastness, the power of joy, and the power of rest. And uh, the first of these, and that is the, the power of aspiration, has four uh, subheadings connected to it. Uh, there's the, the object of aspiration, the result of aspiration, uh, the causes of aspiration and uh, the conclusion. And with regard to the first, that is the, the object of aspiration, it in turn has uh, three points related to it. First of all is uh, dispelling of fault. The second is adopting of qualities, or the good qualities. And the the third is the, mm -hmm. the, the checking in order to enumerate what needs to be done and what needs to be avoided what should be done and what should not be done so again it's just saying bring into mind really how wonderful this text is uh, the expertise and attention to detail that Master Shanti Deva has brought to uh, all of these points is something uh, really uh, astounding. It's really amazing. Mm -hmm. So the first of these, <clears throat> that was <clears throat> dispelling of fault. And verses number 33 and 34, and look at this point, and they read, I shall have to overcome the boundless faults of myself and others. And in order to destroy each of these faults alone, I may have to strive until an ocean of eons is exhausted. But if within myself I do not perceive even a fraction of the perseverance required to exhaust these faults, then why do not I not have a heart attack? For now, I have become an abode for infinite misery. Mm -hmm. 
tamca tağın şomba çiğte asa çiğin insan da çocuk ki vasıda çebe tuğla kellan kari kellan ve tağın geto gudu asa maçı var yine kebe çiğ olsa so um, in taking on the mind of enlightenment uh, one then commits to the activities related to the cultivation of that mind of enlightenment and this is a vow that one makes then to all sentient beings that uh, that's what actually is the vow to attain enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings and so in order to be known as a child of the conqueror uh, we are committed to um to really doing everything giving everything we possibly can uh, to attain enlightenment for all sentient beings and so in this particular case it's talking about yes uh, this means that we are going to be the ones who are going to eradicate overcome as it says here the boundless faults of myself and others it's something i've taken on as a as a commitment yeah ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、
kind of a fall into the lower realms where you will have to undergo uh, countless suffering. You will uh, simply be a, a kind of a, seeing as a repository for uh, harsh suffering. And in contemplating this, it says, you know, you, you really, if you're really serious, your heart should break at this point. Uh, and if it doesn't, uh, then it's kind of like you say, what is your heart made of then? Is it made of metal, of iron, or is it made of stone? ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、
there isn't really a choice. If we have uh, any uh, motivation to practice according to enthusiastic effort, and then um, the generation of um, in aspiration in this context is is really um, indispensable. There's no second path. There's no alternative way of doing it. And so this is something that we must reach that point where we're absolutely convinced. It's very important to, to reach that sense of com conviction that this is the path. And that it, this in turn uh, will help you to, to stay on the path. And so it's kind of like, and also that to, it will help to say that the degree to which we develop these four powers, uh, then we will not allow them to degenerate. It's very, very good. And to understand that, you know, by not taking them on, we're not really uh, committing ourselves to generating them. Uh, then that whole, you know, path is fraught with fault. And, and uh, we can see ourselves degenerating quite quickly. And so it's kind of saying, okay, I have looked into the uh, faults of self-cherishing, the benefits of cherishing, cherishing others. And my aim is to fulfill the purpose of self and others by attaining the state of enlightenment. It is very clear uh, that I, I must abandon self-cherishing. I must completely embrace the whole concept of benefiting others. And in that, and saying, I, I can't see any other alternative if I want to fulfill my, my, my motivation and my bodhicitta motivation, which I have, by the way, accepted as a commitment. And so, therefore, it's kind of reaching that, that point of conviction where you say, I have, there is no second path, there is no alternative, I will develop this aspiration, this self-confidence, this joy, and, and, this, and, and apply the rest where necessary. in uh, in relation to the power of re rejoicing uh, you know we can really start to uh, pump ourselves up really by considering how amazing it is that we have been born as a human being not only that but i have a precious human rebirth not only that but i've met with the buddha dharma not only that but i have a certain affinity with those teachings you know this is an amazing advantage this is a great great uh, benefit asset for me and it's kind of like you know i realize that again if i'm again talking about the law of cause and effect this is a an amazing result of some amazing cause the merit that i have accumulated in the past and so you kind of say okay i realized somewhere in the path i had was on the right path and i did the right thing i can't kind of like stop now i can't let myself my previous self down i've got to keep going because i've arrived at just with all these amazing conducive conditions for being able to integrate the dharma into my life completely and so this way you know you you kind of inspire yourself and you feel the joy of thinking how fortunate i am you know always this is the mind training uh, of being able to see yourself in an extremely advantageous situation and uh, you can you can do that you know and you can kind of go i can not only have that appreciation of the teachings 
But in the mind training, I can look at every single incident in my life and use it to create a cause to attain enlightenment. And that means suffering. When suffering arises, I simply are able to view this, this suffering uh, as a cause to be able to attain a state of enlightenment, turn it around, transform it. Similarly, if it's a happiness that arises, I use that particular happiness as a cause to create a cause for the attainment of enlightenment and rejoice with having such amazing uh, flexibility, with having such an amazing mind that can view the world in this way. And so you have a lot to be very, very joyful about. And so it's kind of like, you know, you, you say to yourself, I can actually transform all the suffering of cyclic existence into a cause to attain the omniscient state of enlightenment. Imagine that. That's that's quite something. You know, I can use all of what's happening to me to guarantee a positive rebirth in the next life. And that's something really worth rejoicing about. <laughs> so therefore, you know, that joy will say, you know, you can say, okay, I have no time to, to waste, therefore, I'm really going to kind of jump right into it, you know, and wholeheartedly. And uh, to uh, further focus the mind, should I be in any way hesitating, again, to bring back that death meditation, to know that death is definite, the time of death is indefinite, it's only my spiritual practice that will be of any good to me at that time of de death. And in this way, to set yourself to really in integrate the four powers as mentioned here, and slowly, gradually, you will see how they can become um, a, a kind of a, a go-to uh, powers in our daily practice. And so it's not a question of awaiting some external conditions to arise to be able to do this. You know that yourself, all the conducive conditions are within yourself. And you need to bring them out uh, to, to 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 develop these four powers. <laughs> so uh, let's leave it there for today. <laughs> so again, we bring our mind to focus on the Guru Buddha in the space in front. <laughs> So reflecting how in all of cyclic existence, we know it's in the nature of, of suffering and doesn't get beyond suffering. All the suffering. <laughs> Uh <laughs> Tene 
Dumbati and Caso, I give also to Valley and Tarichi when Yako Joseph, Pandit Savala, Madame Tarichi open the Kadisho, Kuzu to Jungo Sato, Sunday Chavalatana, Rangi, Tungi Nagala, Lamaturia on Botan, to Chu, Tambuka, Nivago, the Shu, Summer Tempson, Sanja Kumamato, but the Chelsons, any Yala to a Medet Chavap, what the Chap. So in reflecting on renunciation in this way, how all of the six realms of existence are just dominated by suffering, because all of cyclic existence is in the nature of suffering, and wanting to affect the definite emergence from that, uh, that mind of renunciation, is symbolized at our own crown now by a lotus mandala seat. Uh, and then reflecting on uh, the fact of that self, wanting to attain such a liberation, where, what is the nature of the status of that self? And when we reflect uh, on that and analyze within the body-mind continuum, we see that and such a self does not exist even at the atomical level. And uh, arriving at the end of that analysis by the, at the mere negation of the object of negation, uh, that indeed symbolized by the, the syllable hung, which in, in turn transforms into the sun mandala seat, uh, on our crown and then on reflection on that bringing uh, extrapolating from that uh, analysis we understand that phenomena uh, therefore cannot exist uh, independently and therefore must arise independence and that uh, this makes all thing all of what we the cause and effect valid therefore the motivation to attain enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings, the mind of enlightenment itself, is validated. And we can see that if we create the necessary causes, that it will lead to those uh, particular results. And there is a correlation there. And that uh, in, in realizing this, uh, we see that the mind of enlightenment itself is uh, symbolized by the syllable A. Ah, and that ah, in turn transforms into the moon mandala seat. So now we have our pre-prepared seat on our crown. And we now invite, invoke uh, the Guru Buddha to come from the space in front and to uh, take that seat. O oh, glorious and precious Guru Guru, come take your lotus and moon seat placed here on my crown. Keep me safe in your kindness. Bestow on me the attainments of body, speech and mind. At the end of the first recitation, the Guru Buddha begins that journey. At the end of the second, he arrives at our pre-prepared seat. And at the end of the third, we have the certainty that the Guru Buddha will remain with us until we attain the state of enlightenment itself. And this brings forth a sense of, of rejoicing. And we make uh, the seven-limbed offerings together with the mandala offering. <laughs> Sim and then we begin the process again of uh, visualizing at our own heart center a suitable seat in which to to invite uh, towards which we can invite the, the guru buddha on our crown and so this requires again reflection on the cyclic existence being in the nature of suffering all of these six realms of existence not getting beyond uh, that state of suffering uh, that is symbolized by uh, the mandala seat uh, which we visualize at our heart center 
And then uh, we reflect on the fact that all inner and outer phenomena lack any objective existence. They're merely imputed. And that uh, this reaching of that point of uh, phenomena not even uh, having any uh, independent existence, even at the atomical level, uh, that mere negation of the object of negation is uh, initially uh, symbolized by the syllable um, uh, hung. And that hung transforms into the sun mandala seat uh, on our crown uh, at our heart center. And then following on from that, we see again that this lack of any independent existence uh, then infers that phenomena uh, therefore arise independence, independence upon, uh, for example, causes and conditions. And therefore, uh, the aspiration to attain the state of enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings is, is validated and is rendered possible because we can establish the causes to lead to that result. And so the generation of that mind of enlightenment uh, is it, it becomes extremely possible for us. And that is symbolized by the syllable A, ah, which transforms into the moon mandala seat uh, on our, at our heart. Again, we make the invocation to the Guru Buddha on our crown. Oh, glorious and precious Guru, come take your lotus and moon seat place there at my heart. Keep me safe in your kindness. Bestow on me the attainments of body, speech, and mind. At the end of the first uh, recitation of that uh, verse, then uh, the Guru Buddha moves down through the central, down through the crown chakra into the central channel. At the end of the second, the Guru Buddha comes to rest at our pre-prepared seat at the heart center. And at the end of the third, again, we have uh, that certainty that the Guru Buddha will remain until we attain the state of enlightenment. Again, we rejoice at this fact. Then the petals of the lotus fold over and are joined at their tips by a white five-pronged semi-vadra. And the whole is surrounded by three mantras, the name mantra of Shakyamuni Buddha in a clockwise direction, the mantra of Mandrishri in an anti-clockwise direction, and the mantra of dependent origination again in a clockwise direction. ま、ランゲ、ニングゴソラバトベオモネバティ、あのコソントレ、ウェセパトベバラランゲチボネ、カンティバラウェセチョデ、ペ、ルグナンタジャウェセチャメ。ワランゲ、ルゲネ、ジ
uh, all of the uh, negativities that we have done towards uh, the triple gem uh, the uh, and to our parents etc uh, of abandoning the dharma and all of uh, negativities indeed that are kind of resulting uh, mental or physical illness so these are eradicated so that our uh, body and mind are rendered now pliable for dharma uh, practice um, and then the biggest uh, uh, impediment to our quickly attaining enlightenment being ordinary appearance is uh, is swapped uh, for mm -hmm. a pure appearance uh, where we see everything in its pure aspect え、and then through the and then through the uh, combination of uh, mm, my own most subtle wind acting as the substantial cause together with the body of the Buddha acting as the cooperative conditions my own body arises as the enlightened body of a Buddha and through the combination of my own most subtle mind acting as the substantial cause, together with the mind of the Buddha acting as the cooperative conditions, my own mind is now transformed into the enlightened mind of a Buddha. Uh, now I see my own body, speech and mind as inseparable from a body, speech and mind uh, of a Buddha. Uh, this is, is, is really uh, wonderful. Uh, the... A place I am in also is purified of all fault and becomes the, the pure realm of an enlightened being. Uh, this brings forth a sense of a bliss in the mind, which combines with voidness, and I abide in the wisdom of non-dual bliss and voidness. And then seeing myself as a fully enlightened being, and also as lacking any inherent existence, I send light rays out from my heart center, equal in number to all of the sentient beings in existence, in all the realms of existence. And upon dissolving into them, they spontaneously arise as fully enlightened beings. And likewise, the place that they are in is purified of all fault and becomes the pure realm of an enlightened being. This is something I completely rejoice in. This is a, a wonderful result. Today is the day I've been able to fulfill the purpose of myself and all other sentient beings. I have it, uh, brought them to that state of enlightenment. And uh, I realize that the leading of all sentient beings to that state of enlightenment, uh, the um, the virtue that has facilitated this, and myself as the agent of that virtue, uh, all are completely empty of inherent existence. <laughs> Because <laughs> That's 
the leading of all sentient beings to that state of enlightenment, the uh, virtue that has facilitated that, myself as the agent of that virtue, again, all lacking any inherent existence, even at the atomic level. Uh, this brings forth a sense of bliss, which combines with voidness, and I abide in the wisdom of non-dual bliss and voidness. And of course, uh, all of this is, we're operating at the level of, uh, of aspiration and imagination here. Uh, it isn't so easy just to uh, reach these states, of course, but and nevertheless, in the making of my dedication, I sincerely dedicate so that I can quickly, quickly make what I am visualizing and imagining here manifest. And that, uh, I understand that this requires the attainment of, of enlightenment in order to benefit all sentient beings. Uh, I understand that the causes to bring that about are the perfection of the mind of enlightenment and the full realization of emptiness. And so it is uh, now part of my commitment to dedicate all of my time and effort into uh, interpreting and transforming everything that happens from here on in, whether it's positive, negative, uh, whether I'm sick or well, or whatever my situation is, uh, to uh, transforming all uh, situations like that into causes uh, to attain enlightenment. In other words, the uh, causes to enhance my mind of enlightenment and to reach more clarity with my understanding of emptiness. Ten can pay 
treasure of compassion not aimed at true existence and manjushri master of flawless wisdom as well as vajrapani destroyer of hordes of demons without exception the tsongkhapa crown jewel of the sages of the land of snows losong drakpa at your feet i make requests okay thank you take care everyone <laughs> thank you okay. thank you thank you take care thank you yeah thank you everyone yeah <laughs>